The goal for this part is to publish our app on Google Play, which is the dominant Android app ecosystem run by Google. Once we do this, we can easily share our app with friends and family, which will be really fun. And you can point to your app in your resume or your app portfolio, which will help you in landing a job. So Google makes it relatively quick and easy to become a developer on their platform compared to the Apple App Store, which is the app store for iPhones and iPads. And there are two big differences between Google and Apple here. One is that it's way cheaper to become a developer for Google. It's a one-time fee of $25 to become a Google developer. Compare that to Apple, which is $99 every year. So that actually adds up really quickly on the Apple side, whereas Google is much, much cheaper. Um, and the second reason that it's easier to become a developer with Google is because the review process for publishing an Android app is much lighter compared to Apple. The Google's process for reviewing our app is largely automated, which means that the turnaround time is a lot faster. Whereas Apple will have a real life human manually check your app and you might be rejected if your app is deemed low quality or if it's doing something that Apple doesn't like. And so there's been a lot of articles talking about the pros and cons of each approach. I would say that the average app quality on Apple is going to be higher because they actually do reject quite a few apps and they have a higher quality standard. But the diversity of apps on Google Play is way higher with more than 2 million published Android apps. And that's because Google accepts most of the apps that are submitted to the Play Store. And the other impact of the automated review system of Google is that the iteration speed is a lot faster. So with Apple, you might have to wait more than a week in order to get a review and get your update published. But with Google, as you make improvements, those updates will go out faster to the end user. So we're going to spend a lot of time in the Google Play console in order to create a new app and update it with all the information. But before we do that, there are two pieces of prep work that I want to do, one in the emulator and one in Android Studio. So first, in the emulator, this is where I want to spend a few minutes just taking some screenshots of the app. So the way you can do that is Control-S on a PC or Command-S on a Mac. So we can just take one of the home screen. Why don't we take um, a screenshot with some of the cards flipped over? Let me try and get a match. Well, that looks good. Let's do one more screenshot here. Maybe we can do a different size over a couple. And then maybe we can also include a couple of the creation flow. And then finally, maybe we can show folks that they can download a custom game. Okay, awesome. So those have now been saved. By default, they're going to be saved to the desktop. Um, we're going to use those later when we create our Google Play listing. So the next thing we'll do is open up Android Studio, and we're going to create a release bundle from Android Studio, and that'll be what we upload to Google Play. If you go into the menu and go to Build and tap on Generate Signed Bundle or APK, you have two options here, an Android App Bundle or an APK. So the Android App Bundle is recommended because it's a newer file format that Google is pushing, and you can kind of think of it like a zip file, which contains other files inside of it. And in particular, it contains the compiled code for your project plus the resources, and it lets Google Play create an optimized APK that users will get on their device. And so depending on the kind of device and the screen size and other things, Google Play will optimize what code and resources needs to be downloaded by that user, and that results in a smaller download size. So I want to pick Android App Bundle, tap on Next, and here we need to create a key store. And this is a key store is basically a way that Google can validate the authenticity of the developer. And so I'm going to uh, choose the location as the desktop, and then I'll give this a name of keystore.ks. And then provide a password and make sure you keep this somewhere secure because if you lose this, you're going to have to create a brand new app on Google Play rather than updating your existing app. Same thing with the key. You need an alias, but I'll leave it as the default key zero. Use some password here. And then for the certificate, I'm just going to put my first and last name. And that's all we need for now. Uh, of course, my passwords don't match. Let me try this one more time. Okay, seems like that worked. Tap on Remember Password just so that as we 
make changes in the future. We don't have to keep typing all this information again. Tap on next, and then we want a release version of the app. And so our app is fairly small, so this building of the release app shouldn't take too long, but if you have a larger app, this, this can certainly take several minutes. All right, so it looks like we were able to generate the signed bundle, so I'm gonna locate it. Shows up over here, and so you can see here the AAB file is 2.5 megabyte, and that's pretty good. It's a pretty small app, and keep in mind that this is an upper bound of the size because the AAB is essentially a zip file, and Google Play will optimize what APK it generates for the user's device. So 2.5 megabytes is an upper bound on the size of our APK. So what I have over here are all the screenshots that we took. So I'm going to drag over the AAB file into this directory. And this is now everything we need in order to create a good Google Play listing. So let's go back now to <clears throat> Google Chrome and go to the Google Play console. I'm going to create a new app. We'll update this with a bit more detail later on, but just for now, I'm going to call it My Memory. The default language is English US. It's going to be a game. This is a free app. And then we're going to agree to a couple of policies and then tap on Create App. All right, so Google Play here will walk you through a bunch of different questions and policy things that you need to answer. And then after we do that, then we're going to upload our AAB. So first is app access. In our case, everything is available without special access. There's no such thing as logging into our app. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go to ads. We have no ads. Content rating, we need to fill out a questionnaire. So I'll put in my email address. Our app is a game. Tap on next. All right, so the only thing that we have to answer yes to is actually this question because the app does natively allow users to exchange content through sharing images. That's if you create a new memory board and someone downloads that. That's one way for users to interact with each other. So we tap answer yes on that question, but we can answer no on all of these. All right, and then if you look through, you can see the rating that we got in our app. It looks like, as expected, our app is pretty friendly for everyone. Submit. Let's go back now and see what else have we not done. All right, so the next is the privacy policy. So every app has to have a privacy policy. And typically what I recommend for this is if you don't wanna go through the hassle of setting up a website, just create a Google Doc which describes the privacy policy and paste that in. I put that together over here and I can actually link this if you want to copy um, a similar privacy policy. I basically took this as a template from some other app. It just describes um, the app and how we're using some Google services. So I'm going to copy this, make sure it's <clears throat> accessible to anyone with the link, paste that in, click, tap save, and then target audience. Um, we are going to target anyone 13 and up. If you target people less than 13, there's some other compliance rules that I don't want to deal with around targeting kids. Tap on next. And then our store listing will not intentionally, unintentionally appeal to children. So tap on no there. And then and we're done with this section. Tap save. All right, and then it seems like we have one more section here. Is our app a news app? Answer is no. All right, so we have completed all the questions about the app content. That's great. So now let's actually go into the store listing. I'm going to go to the main store listing. And there's a couple things that are required. Anything with the asterisk is required regarding metadata about our app, like things that are describing our app. So I have a note over here where I spent some time putting together a name description and full description. So I'm, I'm putting in a name of my memory image matching game. And the app name is actually really, really important because that's how Google Play will figure out when to surface your app for search queries on Google Play. And I have a friend, Alex, who wrote a really good article about how to think about naming your app. And it really comes down to two things. Number one, know what people are searching for in order to try and find your app. And number two, put those words that people are searching for in the title of your app. And so I'm basically guessing that if people want to download our app, they're going to be searching for things like memory or image matching or game. And that's what I've put in the title. One thing you can do is if you're publishing the same app, I'd love 
for all of us to be able to find each other and, and try out the different versions of the app that people have built. So just put your name here. So that way, anyone else who's looking for this particular app, they can find it by, they can find out who made it by looking at the last section of the title. And this, this topic of SEO or search engine optimization is a huge topic. Um, you can read a lot about how do you game that and how do you make sure that your app gets the best chance at being surfaced. I'll leave a link to Alex's article if you want to learn more about that. So short description is um, something which is 80 characters or less. So what I did for that is this, a free customizable memory game on Android, match pairs of images. And then the full description can be a little bit more uh, robust and long. So I'm not gonna read it all right now, but basically what I'm describing is that this is a totally free open source app. It's customizable memory game, um, there are no ads, and <clears throat> I'm documenting some of the main features here. All right, so the next thing is graphics. There are two required graphics, one which is the app icon and one which is a feature, feature graphic. So the app icon has to be 512 by 512. Um, these pixels are exact, so it can't be even one pixel off. And then the feature graphic has to be 1024 by 500. And so what I recommend you do for this is open up a program like Sketch. Like, let me show you what I've done. Here are all of the assets that we use for the memory game. Here's the app icon, which is 512 by 512. And for example, if you wanted to create the feature graphic, you can insert a rectangle in Sketch and then update the dimensions as appropriate. So we'll want it to be 1024 wide and 500 tall. And then you can kind of play with this however you want. Change the color, add in some shapes, add in some images. And then once you're happy with what you have, then you can export both the icon and the feature graphic. Let's come back into the Google Play Console and we will drag and drop our feature graphic and app icon. So for the feature graphic, let me show you what I put together. So just the <clears throat> picture of the Corgi, just because that's kind of the main custom game that we've created uh, with this same color scheme of the app. Drag that over. And then while that's uploading, I'm gonna also upload the app icon. And so what I did for that is what you already saw, just this grid of squares. And so now both the app icon and feature graphic are updated. And finally, we get to the phone screenshots. So I'm going to go back to <clears throat> this directory where we have all the screenshots and drag those out. Okay, that looks good. And you can have up to eight screenshots, minimum of two. And there are some really fancy things that you can do to make these look a little bit better like having some sort of colored background or combining two of the screenshots into a continuous shot. Um, but we're gonna leave it simple for now. We are going to ignore the tablet screenshots. So we'll just basically reuse the phone screenshots. Same thing with a 10 inch. And then we don't have a video for now. Tap on save. So now we have the basics for our main store listing. We're gonna go into the release section, go into production. Here's where we're going to create a new release. And just one thing I'll mention, we're not gonna deal with it currently, but there is an option here for testing your app before you do a broad production rollout. So you have open testing as an option or closed testing and also internal testing. These are basically various options to allow you to test out your app with a trusted set of users in your company or with friends and family, or just have an open beta program prior to releasing it publicly. We're not gonna deal with any of that just to keep it simple. So I'm just gonna go into production track and create a new release. And we're going to use app signing by Google, tap on continue. And then we're going to drag and drop our AAB, our Android app bundle. So I'm going over here, drag, drag, dragging that. The release name can be initial release. And then release notes, I'm just gonna leave as the default. Tap on save. All right, that looks good. One thing that we'll need to do is specify which countries we want to release our app to. So tap on this add countries and regions, and I'm gonna go ahead and select all of them. So we're gonna add all 151 countries. Then we're gonna go back to releases, tap on edit, and then go to reviewed release. It looks like we have some errors. All right, so it says that our app can't be published yet. Complete the steps listed in the dashboard. So let's see what did we miss in the dashboard. So we have to specify an app category. Let's do that. We are a game, and in particular, we are a puzzle game. Let's just quickly add a tag 
called memory. Apply that. Now we'll leave our email address and opt into external marketing and hit save. So now let's go back into the production release section. Go into releases, tap on edit, and let's see if we are able to properly release this now. Okay, amazing. So we have set up our store listing properly. We've done all the questionnaires, all the policy agreements, and we can see the inner app bundle, and then we'll hit this button for start rollout to production. So the review process might take a little bit longer now because of coronavirus and, and the lack of staff, but my experience historically has been that still with a simple app like this, we should be able to get a review and have it approved within two or three days. I'll come back when the app is published and we can actually look at it in the Play Store. Until then, hit the like button and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. See you all soon.